and the ice has stories to tell us. My friend Lonnie Thompson digs core drills in the ice. They dig down and they bring the core drills back up and they look at the ice and they study it. When the snow falls, it traps little bubbles of atmosphere and they can go in and measure how much CO2 was in the atmosphere the year that that snow fell. What's even more interesting, I think, is they can measure the different isotopes of oxygen and figure out a very precise thermometer and tell you what the temperature was the year that uh, that bubble was trapped in the snow as it fell. When I was in Antarctica, I saw cores like this and a guy looked at it. He said, right here is where the US Congress passed the Clean Air Act. And I couldn't believe it, but you can see the difference with the naked eye. Just a couple of years after that law was passed, it's very clearly distinguishable. They can count back year by year the same way a forester reads tree rings, and you can see each annual layer from the melting and refreezing. So they can go back uh, in a lot of these mountain glaciers uh, a thousand years. And they constructed a thermometer of the temperature. The blue is cold and the red is warm. Now, uh, I show this for a couple of reasons. Number one, the so-called skeptics will sometimes say, oh, this whole thing, this is a cyclical phenomenon. There was a medieval warming period after all. Well, yeah, there, there was. There, there it is right there. <laughs> there are two others. But compared to what's going on now, there's just no comparison. So if you look at a thousand years worth of temperature and compare it to a thousand years of CO2, you can see how closely they fit together. Now, a thousand years of uh, CO2 in the mountain glaciers, that's one thing. But in Antarctica, they can go back 650,000 years. This incidentally uh, is the first time anybody outside of a small group of scientists has seen this image. This is the present day uh, era, and that's the last ice age. Then it goes up, that, we're going back in time now, 650,000 years, that's the period of warming between the last two ice ages. That's the second and third ice age back, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh ice age back. Now, an important point. In all of this time, 650,000 years, the CO2 level has never gone above 300 parts per million. Now, as I said, they can also measure temperature. Here's what the temperature has been on our Earth. Now, one thing that kind of jumps out at you is, well, let me put it this way. If my classmate from the sixth grade that talked about uh, Africa and South America were here, he would say, do they ever fit together? <laughs> Most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But they did, of course. And the, the relationship is actually very complicated, but there is one relationship that is far more powerful than all the others, and it is this. When there is more carbon dioxide, the temperature gets warmer because it traps more heat from the sun inside. In the parts of the United States that contain the modern cities of Cleveland, Detroit, New York, uh, in the northern tier, this is the difference between a nice day and having a mile of ice over your head. Keep that in mind when you look at this fact. Carbon dioxide, having never gone above 300 parts per million, here is where CO2 is now. Way above where it's ever been as far back as this record will measure. Now, if you'll bear with me, I want to really emphasize this point. I, the, the crew here has tried to teach me how to use this contraption here, so if I don't kill myself, I'll... It's already right here. Look how far above the natural cycle this is, and we've done that. But ladies and gentlemen, in the next 50 years, really in less than 50 years, it's going to continue to go up. 
when some of these children who are here are my age, here's what it's going to be in less than 50 years. You've heard of off the charts. <laughs> Within less than 50 years, it'll be here. There's not a single fact or date or number that's been used to make this up that's in any controversy. The so-called skeptics look at this and they say, so? That seems perfectly okay. <laughs> well, again, if on the temperature side, if, if this much on the cold side is a mile of ice over our heads, what would that much on the warm side be? Ultimately, this is really not a political issue so much as a, a moral issue. If we allow that to happen, it is deeply unethical. I had such faith in our democratic system, our self-government, I actually thought and believed that the story would be compelling enough to cause a real sea change 